The Terry Tutbirds rarely and selectively gives interviews, but a couple of weeks before the test rentals, she devoted time to her longtime partner, Tinkoff. The questionnaire format was completed in 10 minutes, below are the coaches' views on life and work. What is the most important thing your parents taught you? Probably, the fact that everything valuable is given with difficulty, therefore it is appreciated. Rate your toughness as a coach, on a scale from 1 to 10? I don't think our team or our methods are tough, or even more cruel. Therefore, I will probably give a rating of 3 out of 10. Because our system still has a kind of recommendation character. Our accumulated experience allows us to already see what tasks to give and what plans to build. Any athlete has the right both once and systematically to refuse to perform the task. Well, the result, for Joyer unfortunately, we see is obvious. A score of 10 is when, probably, the coach insists on his tasks. We don't insist. We come, we give tasks, and then the athlete. We have seven athletes on the ice, three of them perform tasks, and four right in a circle. Just because they don't feel in good shape. Here, unfortunately, if it's one workout, well, it's okay. And if it becomes a system, then it won't work. Do you have friendly relations with students? No. No. I keep my distance. If a child wants to talk to me, to be confidential, I will do it with pleasure, but still at some distance. What do you think about at the end of the working day? So as not to forget your dogs at work. And get home, as soon as possible. What kind of superpower would you like to have? Heal. That would be really cool. Physically, yes. To heal from diseases. Save. How has life in a Caucasian patriarchal family affected your character? My parents were very able-bodied and patient. I think I took from them, well, probably 30% of this very ability to work. And patience. I'm not as able-bodied as my dad or my mom. It seems to me that they didn't sleep at all, but did everything for us and for the result. What do you think your dad would say if he saw what his daughter had achieved? He would cry. It would be tears of joy and pride and, perhaps, some kind of pain from the fact that the public is not always fair to you, well, it seems to us that it is not always fair to you. You work and work, and in the end there is so much criticism. Is such a feeling as pride dangerous for an athlete? If we are talking about star disease, testing with copper pipes, then I believe that this has a devastating effect, not only on the athlete, but also on the coach. A person ceases to develop, to look for flaws in himself. Self-esteem is a little different. I probably have it too. But what is pride in sports? Unwillingness to communicate with peers? I think it shouldn't be. You don't have to consider yourself the best of all. You just have to go out and do, show what you're working on. And if it leads to the highest step of the pedestal, well, great. If he worked and is confident, of course, it will give him a sense of confidence, knowing that he has rolled this program a hundred times. And that's all you need. Well, good preparation always gives you this feeling of self-confidence. And that's good, but it's not pride. You need to be confident in yourself. This is usually laid down through the training process. But not pride. Yuzuru Hanyu, when he was the best in the world, he never had a sense of pride. He communicated with everyone on an equal footing and bowed respectfully to each athlete if he liked how he performed some element in training. This is not pride, this is sport, everything is equal here. What advice would you give to the current younger generation? Learn to set both micro goals and macro goals, whether for today, a year ahead, or 10 years ahead. And learn to appreciate your own time, so that later it would not be excruciatingly painful for the aimlessly lived years. The micro goal is for today's training. Just do as much as I can today. Collect the elements that I can collect. If the coach has given the task to roll a short one, even with mistakes, to perform as much as possible. And even if something does not work out, but you have given your best, it will bear fruit tomorrow. And if you didn't work enough today, you didn't work enough tomorrow. And if you don't have a goal yet, you come aimlessly, this is very bad. Unfortunately, the younger generation very often lives without any purpose. You ask them, and they get lost just from this question. What do you want to achieve? 
I want to become a great figure skater. What's it? How is that? What is a great figure skater? And what does it have to do with you, such a small child, standing in front of me? If you could live a day again, which day would you choose? Definitely it would be a day where I am with my daughter, with my parents, with dad, with mom. So that we can spend this day together. Hold your hand, see your eyes, sit next to you. You don't need anything else, just when you realize that everyone is at home. I really scold myself for those moments when the training day was over and you were so tired and you still had to get there and Diana said, let's go to grandpa. And you understand, until you get there, you'll sit there until you get back. There are no forces and you postpone it for tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, but someday this tomorrow is no more. If you could give yourself advice in the past, having the experience that you have now, what would you say? Pay more attention to your parents. And pamper, just absolutely pamper any parents' wishes, because you will need it yourself in the future. As an athlete, you need to stay in sports until the last day, as long as you have the strength, as long as there are opportunities. Don't finish it. Because this feeling of unrealization remains for life. I would just suggest to myself some technical points that it took me decades to come to. This anyway takes time anyway. I don't believe in becoming fast. How would you describe yourself? I think that I am an absolutely antisocial person. I don't like society. I don't like being in a crowd, I don't like it, it absorbs a lot of energy, and I get very tired. Talent or hard work, which is more important to you? Talent only gives a person an advantage, as a handicap, over other athletes or people in some field or field of activity. But in principle, it's all the same, hard work develops talent. Any talent will die without difficulty. Talent is nothing without work. What advice would you give to very young, young athletes who are starting their way in figure skating? They should understand that everything they do is for themselves. And if they didn't finish something today or dodge the task, it may not be enough for them tomorrow. Where do you find inspiration in difficult moments of life? At work. You come to work, your athlete has learned something, you see the fruits of your labor. This is the motivation to work. Let the small goals. Today they are small, but they will grow into big ones. What character traits, in your opinion, are important for a figure skater? Demanding of yourself, respect for others and love for your work. What inspires you to create new programs? Life. Some life situations, the path traveled. You see, every day something happens. And you want to share your feelings through the program, through choreography, through music. And it's great that sometimes we succeed. And it's great 